Welcome back. I'm Linda Kincaid. In Nairobi, Kenya, on Monday, leaders from nearly 20 African nations met to discuss how best to rev up economic development, alleviate poverty, and help protect people from worsening climate change. At the event, hedge fund giant Bridgewater Associates and the Global Citizen Organization announced a two-day economic summit in the Ivory Coast later this year. And that meeting will focus on helping the World Bank improve living conditions in 75 low-income countries. Well, I spoke today with Hugh Evans, the CEO of Global Citizen, as well as Bridgewater CEO Nia Bardia and Sela Bogonko, representing the youth of Africa. All three were in attendance at the Nairobi conference. And I began by asking Hugh about the goal of October's summit and this new public-private partnership. For the last 12 months, the team at Bridgewater, headed by Nia and I, have been meeting with many African heads of state, including the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, the president of Ghana, Kufu Adu, president of Malawi, Chikwera, and so many others. And through all of these conversations, again and again, it's highlighted the urgent need for the public sector to invest more in the development of the African continent to help catch up to the future dividend that's going to take place as you see a major growth in population that's going to occur over the next 30 years on the continent. And with that background, we decided to support the World Bank's IDA replenishment. And that's why today at President Ruto's Africa Heads of State Summit here in Nairobi, Kenya, Global Citizen and Bridgewater Associates, in partnership with the government of Cote d'Ivoire and Harith General Partners, announced our economic summit. This is a two-day summit that we're going to be hosting in, on October 9th and 10th in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, bringing together heads of state, finance ministers, leaders in civil society, all with one goal, calling on the G20 to increase their investment to support the World Bank's IDA fund by an additional 25%, which would account for more than $6 billion in new financing to help alleviate poverty across the continent. It's certainly a huge goal, significant aim. Uh, to you, Nia, what can Bridgewater bring to this partnership? You're known for research. What can you bring to ensure that every dollar is spent wisely, both on a micro and macro level? There's the announcement we made here today in Nairobi. But if you just take a step backwards, uh, Bridgewater for almost 50 years uh, has been mapping out the cause effect linkages that underpin um, economies and markets. This includes short term uh, drivers, like whether the Fed is going to tighten or not, but very, very importantly, long term drivers. On the day to day, we use this to advise, to give advice to our clients and to manage portfolios. But very, very importantly, we can also use that understanding of what the future might look like in order to help policymakers make great decisions. And one of the more important changes that is happening in the world today is happening here in Africa. And it's going to be very consequential to what the world is going to look like um, over the next 50 years. If I can just say two more things about that just to make it tangible. Today, an eighth of the world's working age population lives in sub-Saharan Africa. That's a little under 700 million people. But Africa is going through a demographic boom. It's growing by about 30% each decade. And that's happening at the same time where population is basically declining in almost every other place in the world. So that means that in the coming future, uh, three quarters of the population growth in the globe is going to come here from, con from the continent, which will result in a third of the population, the working age population, uh, being here in Africa in about 50 years, in our lifetime. And that's a big deal. And that means that Africa is going to have a huge, huge levered effect on the entire world. This could really activate um, a ton of untapped human potential, like the ones that we've seen, by the way, in other regions over the last uh, 50 years. But if that doesn't happen and there's no productivity boom and we just continue on the current path, there's a real chance that um, this is going to be destabilizing, not just for the continent, but the entire world. And just imagine so many people in the continent and the most critical age bracket in a region, by the way, that's most impacted by uh, climate change. We're in Nairobi right now. There's a climate disaster happening right now in Nairobi. People are not talking about it enough. There was one that was happening in Malawi not long ago. And to Hugh's point earlier, this is all part of 
fundraising for the World Bank's International Development Association. And I want to ask you about this, Sela, because you can speak firsthand to the impact of that group. Just explain what you've witnessed in your time. Absolutely. Thank you, Linda. I absolutely agree with Hugh and Nia because what we are facing is a huge opportunity on the one hand, but another huge challenge on the other hand. As uh, mentioned just now, the fact that we have a quarter of the population on the world in 2050 is going to be African. And then by 2075, we're going to have a third of the population that is working, working age and working class, uh, being from Africa, means that we need to begin to make those investments right now. There's quite a bit of funding uh, that is available, but it needs to be channeled in the right directions. And it's true that we need to, we do need to raise um, the ambition in terms of the amount of money that is being raised for the continent, because we have a lot of uh, opportunity to be able to skill some of the workforce on the continent. For example, in the renewable energy space in Africa, we have 50% of the world's renewable energy uh, potential, but then you only have 2% of the investment flowing into the continent, meaning that it, the, the, we need to raise a lot more money that would then flow into the continent to be able to address the globe's uh, demand when it comes to energy. We have 60% of the world's arable land, and we have opportunity to create jobs around agriculture, tourism, energy, um, and many others, even in the digital space. But we do need to be a bit more strategic as leaders in Africa, even as we ramp up the, uh, as donors and as we ramp up um, the investment into the continent. And we could not be working you know, with more, with better uh, partners, with the likes of Global Citizens and, and uh, Bridgewaters who are raising the awareness around the need, but more important, the potential and the demand and the requirements to be able to create more and better jobs for the African youth. Oh, thanks there to Cello.